Hello everyone, this is Robert. So I'm currently working on this project and PLA is not the right material for the application. I need to do something a little bit different. So I landed on ASA. I haven't really done much with ASA or ABS before. It typically requires an enclosed printer, but I need to use the large build volume of the XL, which is not enclosed. So in this video, I'm gonna kind of show you how I'm getting around that and spoiler, one simple trick. $4 shower curtain liner. Totally solves it, prints just fine. So let's start off by talking a little bit more about ASA. Please feel free to use the chapters to skip around in this video. So let's start with why I picked ASA for this particular mystery project. Well, PLA is good at one thing, which is strength, but it's not good at material creep. Strength is, generally speaking, rigidity. So this is one of the pieces for the project. And as you can see, this is very, very rigid. We've all printed out a PLA and we know that it's a very rigid material. It has the downside of being rigid, but not being tough. And I'll get into that in a second, but it is very rigid. The downside to it is it exhibits material creep, which is going to be a huge downside for this project. With PLA, when you apply a load to it, over time it will creep or deform into that load. So if we were to press down on this right there, which is where a load is gonna be applied, it will creep down into that and permanently deform into that shape. And that's gonna be a problem for this. Something like PET-G won't exhibit that same creep, but it's not really very strong. So this is PET-G, and as you can see, it's extremely flexible, and that's because it's very tough. Tough is basically the material's ability to handle an impact. PLA is very brittle, so when you strike it or impact, it's going to just snap or break suddenly, whereas PET-G is gonna be able to absorb that impact because it's very tough. ASA, is all three of these things. It is both strong, it is tough, and it doesn't exhibit material creep. However, ASA is a little bit more expensive than traditional filaments for a PLA, PETG, or even an ABS. You're looking at eh, 15 to $20 a kilogram for just the basic stuff, whereas something like ASA is gonna be closer to $30. So it's a little bit more expensive. It is also a little bit more difficult to print. You print with the nozzle about 260 degrees Celsius, but the bed is about 100, 105 degrees Celsius. So not all printers are gonna be able to maintain that 100, 105 degrees Celsius bed, and that means it's gonna be very, very susceptible to drafts. This is why an enclosure is necessary. If you're printing at 105 degrees Celsius, wind comes along, a draft comes along, and there is a great delta or difference between the ambient temperature and the temperature that you need for the actual print. You're gonna get it warping, you're gonna get cracking, things like this. ASA compared to ABS, ABS is a lot stinkier. Um, it off gases a lot when you print, like a non-insignificant amount of smell is going to be coming off of ABS. Gives you headaches, smells terrible, makes your whole shop just awful. ASA is a lot better at that, and it's also a little bit better at the warping and the cracking. So what we need to do is ultimately just control for that ambient temperature change. We just need to control the drafts, and that's pretty easily done. So let's go do that. There's been a fair amount of criticism of the XL when it came out that it wasn't fully enclosed or didn't even have an option to be fully enclosed. And what I kind of want to show in this video is you don't really need a full enclosure you just need to control drafts. And I'm gonna throw the um, shower curtain up there just to show you what I mean. But as you can see, I've kind of got it sitting in the corner, so it is kind of nicely against two walls. But right here is the door outside, and it is very windy and very cold right now. I think it's like gonna be negative five tonight. So it's very cold, the shop is temperature controlled, but really all we need to do is control drafts. And with the shower curtain in place, inside that little chamber, it can easily maintain about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which is perfectly fine, and it stops any drafts from going in. This right here, it's kind of hard to see, but from that door to this door is the door that we use to let the dogs out during the day. So this is like the worst spot in my entire property for drafts. And it's totally fine with just a shower curtain right there. So let's get that installed and we'll do some printing.
I want to make sure that no one confuses my intentions for making this video at all. I do firmly believe that Prusa should have come out with an enclosure option for this printer at launch. The thing took forever to develop, and they could have had a separate team working on the enclosure. It is a relatively trivial task. I mean, I've thought about making one many, many, many times. It really wouldn't be that hard, especially for them being, you know, the manufacturer of the printer. So I'm not trying to make this case at all. I would really love to see an enclosure for this printer, and when they do finally come out with one, I will most likely buy it. I'm just trying to show that this is a reasonable stopgap solution. It's four dollars and it works pretty good as you will see. I just have a couple screws on the um, structure above to hold the shower curtain nice and easy. You could do whatever it is you need to do for your application but it's pretty simple to just hang it up there because it already has the holes in it and oh we're already done with it. Okay let's go back to the video. I love the fact that in front of me right here is this several thousand dollar studio stand. I've got a really nice camera set up and I'm literally demonstrating how to put a $4 shower curtain on a 3D printer. The future is wonderful. Um, but that, that, it's really as simple as that. That, that works. I'll show you. That is perfectly adequate for printing ASA on the Prusa XL. So while this is printing on the Prusa XL, I'm also going to print the exact same file on my Creality K1 Max, as well as the Bamboo X1C, just as a bit of a comparison since those other two printers are fully enclosed. Another thing that I'm looking to test is whether or not ASA needs glue stick for the build plate. I'm using the satin bed here without any glue stick, and I'm going to see how that works out. Um, I also have the textured build plates. I found that on the bamboo and the Creality glue stick was necessary, but I'm trying it without um, on the Prusa XL. I tend to really have good luck with the build plates on Prusa. They seem to kind of be a little bit better at hanging on to material. So we'll see how all that works out. So the print just finished and I have a little temperature sensor in there. So if I zoom in, you can see that the temperature inside, where is that thing? Temperature inside was about eh, 94, 95 degrees throughout the entirety of that print, not bad. So the print just finished and now I'm gonna release it off the bed. So just gonna undo this. I put on a couple little magnets just to hold it in place. And it's been cooling for uh, a couple minutes. And there you go. There's the finished part. Should have shown it is like perfectly flat. It's not, yeah, it's lifting a tiny bit in the back, but not too bad. So this is the point in the video where I admit that I might have oversold my $4 solution a little bit. Um, here's all the samples. We've got one from the Creality, a couple from the Bamboo, and then a few from the XL. Let's start with the XL since that's you know kind of what the video is about. Here are our three samples. Through the power of video editing, I was able to print all of these in the time that you thought I only did one. This was the original one that you saw me just pull off the build plate, and it's okay. It's acceptable, but it's not great. Um, as far as warping, yeah, there's just a tiny bit of warping here. On all three of these, I'm measuring anywhere between a half to three quarters of a millimeter, and I'll get into that in a second. This one's, it's all right. The top surface, you know, isn't really all that great. And on the bottom surface, there's definitely some evidence that it was um, a little bit too squished. And on the XL, you can't really adjust that. So there was something going on with that, and I'll explain that in a second here. Um, but it's okay. So I did a little bit of troubleshooting and I found out two things. One, the filament had some moisture in it. This was a brand new roll, but I've said this a million times, brand new rolls, that doesn't mean that it doesn't have moisture. It just means that it's sealed. That's all it means. So I changed a couple things. Um, I increased the temperature, decreased the extrusion a little bit because this one was um, over extruding just a tad. So decreased the flow to 98% upped the temperature to 265, and then also dried the filament. And this one looks a lot nicer. This one has a lot less issues. The top surface really isn't fantastic, but it's pretty decent for what it is. And the bottom surface, um, we just need to kind of clean this up. I'll show you how to do that later. The bottom surface looks pretty decent overall as well. So I wanted to try something else out though. 
For this third one, I increased the temperature five more degrees and we got a little bit better surface finish on the top. And the other thing that I did is used glue stick on this one. For these first two, they were done without glue stick, but I was thinking maybe I could try and control this lift a little bit with glue stick and that didn't end up really doing anything. So on the XL with the satin plate, you can use glue or not, doesn't really matter too much. And this is kind of the perfect part for warpage because you have some heat sinking right here because this is gonna continue to print. So this is gonna be a little bit hotter. It's gonna wanna make the material kind of contract and do exactly that. The warp actually happens, um, I've been learning, not because it's not adhering properly to the build plate, it's adhering perfectly to the build plate during the print, but when it stops and it cools down, as it cools, it contracts in a little bit, and that's what creates that little bit of a lift. If we look at the glue pattern on the plate, it has perfect adhesion across the whole print during the whole time, but when it cools, it's cooling too quickly. With an enclosure, it's keeping that heat in and allowing it to cool a little bit slower, but on the XL without a proper enclosure, it's glue it, drying, cooling a little bit too quickly, causing that little bit of half a millimeter lift, which for this part's perfectly fine, but it's not perfectly flat as I was claiming. So let's look at the other two printers. So these two are from the Bamboo and this is from the Creality. Let's start with the Creality. It printed okay. I only did one on this. Um, I do need to tune and tweak this a little bit better. I'm having an issue with the Creality right now where if the build plate is very warm, you don't get a good first layer. And it's actually not really the first layer. It's just that the bed leveling doesn't really work all that well. And as you can see here at the bottom, this is way too high off the bed. This is still too high, but a little bit better. And if you look at the um, bed level mesh, it's just, it's not correct. So I need to fix that. But generally speaking, everything else worked out okay. It still has about the same amount of lift as the ones from the XL, but that is just because it's not really contacting the bed properly. But everything else looks fine. You can see kind of the pattern of the infill coming through. So I do need to tweak the um, slicer settings a little bit, but it printed fine. Not too bad. Now the bamboo is kind of an interesting story. This is the first one that I attempted, and this thing is Warp City. This is the far worst of all of them. And this was stock settings. All these are stock settings, 0.2 millimeter layer height, all that good stuff. This, I tried doing it without glue stick because um, none of the XLs required glue stick. And without glue stick, this just did not get a good first layer. Um, it's kind of all over the place. It's squished in some places, um, too high in other spots, and it just didn't get a good stick on that first layer, even though the build plate was perfectly clean and it just started lifting. It was also going way, way too fast, too aggressive, and couldn't lay down good layers and just had issues overall. So I fixed that by using glue stick, slowing it way down, choosing a different profile and tuning it. And this is the best out of all of them. Um, this has absolutely no warp. I mean, okay, just an inconsequential amount. And it looks really decent, has the best top layer. Um, the bottom layer, you know, isn't absolutely perfect, but it's pretty good. It's, it's very, very good compared to all the others. So this is definitely the best one. And I'm kind of using this profile to tweet tweak and tune um, the other ones. But yeah, the first one, yeah, it took a little bit of tuning to get it to this point. Um, so yeah, overall, it's um, been kind of interesting getting good results out of ASA. So one last little tip that I picked up somewhere, when you pull these parts off the build plate, you can see this kind of white residue on them. This isn't actually the glue stick. This one wasn't printed with the glue stick, but it's just kind of the stresses of the plastic. And we can use just a simple heat gun to get rid of these. So I'm just gonna kind of let this warm up a little bit. You can see that you can just kind of erase them once it warms up. This will just kind of even out that surface a little bit visually.
And since ASA is really tolerant to high temperatures, this isn't gonna like weaken or soften the plastic in any way, which is nice. Jay, I hope that shows up on camera. Um, here's a, another one that's like really apparent. You can see down here in that corner and kind of along there. Yeah, you can just kind of erase it right off. Just a nice little tip to have. So my goal in making this video was to determine for myself if I could reliably print ASA on the Prusa XL without an enclosure using a $4 shower curtain liner as a substitute. I think I've shown that that's reasonable for what I'm trying to do. If I was trying to do like, you know, a full size or full build volume part, maybe that could be a bigger issue. But inside that enclosure, I'm seeing anywhere between 85 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit, which should be enough for printing ASA and not causing any major warping or other issues. I think any of the quality issues I'm seeing are just kind of the weird, quirky nature of the XL. It prints PLA just fine, but sometimes when you throw other filaments at it, it doesn't handle them as well. And I think that's just kind of what I'm seeing. I think it needs further tweaking and tuning for those profiles. I'm going to look and see what Bamboo is doing and see if I can kind of fix that a little bit. But this has been a non-ideal circumstance for it. Um, it's actually a lot colder in the shop than I initially realized. It is actually, come on, let me get out of the way. Oh my God. It is actually 57 degrees out here. So this is about as bad as it gets. It is negative seven or negative nine outside right now without wind chill. It is quite crispy in here in the garage right now. And inside that enclosure, it can still maintain that 85 to 95 degrees. So that is right within the realm of what you would want for printing ASA. You could go a little bit warmer. It would definitely like it a little bit warmer, but that is in the realm of what is possible. So I think, you know, this is a reasonable substitute for an enclosure. Obviously, when a real enclosure comes out, I'm going to buy that and just, you know, be done with it. But it can work in a pinch. A real enclosure is always going to be better, but this works as a substitute. So hopefully you got something out of this video. Um, I'm going to keep printing. Um, I have a big project that's probably going to require two or three full rolls um, running through this with a lot of different parts. So I'll let you know if this doesn't end up working out. But so far, I'm having some high hopes that I think I'll end up getting some decent parts out of it. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video. I'm going to go warm up. Bye.